Hello students, welcome to EPG Partshala. I am Dr. Anupma, Professor at Department of Economics, Punjabi University, Patiala. I am going to talk about the module Problem of Varying Housing Cost and Quality from Population, Urbanization and Poverty. So students, we are going to discuss about the determinants of and the interrelationship among housing demand, housing prices, and housing quality. Housing is the basic necessity. It is an important determinant of the standard of living and quality of life of citizen of a country. People spend their lifetime savings in purchasing a house. Therefore, the cost of houses as well as its quality means a lot in their lives. Public concern over the cost of housing arises from two factors. First, housing is the single largest expenditure item in the budgets of most families and individuals. The average household devotes roughly one quarter of income to housing expenditure while poor and near poor households commonly devote half of their incomes on housing. These high proportions suggest that small percentage change in housing prices and rents will have large impacts on non-housing consumption and household well-being. People yearn for affordable and decent houses and the communities and the societies aim at adequate socially sustainable housing facilities. The socially sustainable houses are the houses which meet the fundamental, intermediate and ultimate needs. The social sustainability in housing is about creating affordable, good quality, inclusive and diverse, secure and healthy dwellings, residential areas and communities which are well integrated into wider socio-spatial systems. This module aims to throw light on social sustainability of housing, cost of housing, housing cost and change in demand, the relationship between income and housing demand, effect of financial assets and monetary forces on housing prices, the determinants of housing affordability, variations in quality of housing, housing quality and the health problems. The social sustainability of housing and its components can be understood with help of figure 1. The figure shows that the cost of housing as indicated by affordability as well as the housing quality are the fundamental needs of social sustainability. Next comes the accessibility in terms of transport and other facilities and then the neighborhood quality and the relationships in the community are the ultimate needs. But all these features are actually mutually inclusive. The accessibility, affordability, the quality of houses and that of neighborhoods are interrelated. Therefore, in the present module, we would discuss about the factors affecting the cost and quality of housing facilities and the variations therein. The cost of housing. A variety of demand and supply side factors determine housing prices in an emerging economy. These factors could be quantitative as well as qualitative in nature. The size of population, its composition, urbanization, economic prosperity, role of speculative investors, government policy intervention and monetary policy etc are among the host of factors that play dynamic role in the housing prices. Traditional models of housing market are based on the assumption that housing markets clear instantaneously. Prices are assumed to adjust almost immediately so that the demand for housing equals the existing stock at any point in time. However, recent theoretical and empirical works have established that the market for owner-occupied housing is often inefficient 
and adjust slowly to the changes in marking conditions. Dipasquil and Wheaton find strong evidence that it takes several years for market changes to be fully incorporated into housing prices. We can observe the changes in housing costs due to variations in demand and supply in figure 2 and figure 3. The figure 2 shows the change in prices if the change in demand is temporary. In this figure, the rational consumers and the construction houses developers optimize their satisfaction with given resources. The demand curve is downward sloping, indicating that the lower housing cost and rents lead to higher demand and higher ones to lower demand. While for the suppliers who want to maximize their returns from the investment in housing projects, a higher price leads to more of the supplies and lower ones to lower supplies, thus giving an upward sloping supply curve. Supply is fixed in the short run due to the time lag in construction but long run supply is an upward sloping function of the rent and price. The aggregate demand on a housing submarket equals the number of households living in the submarket. The figure 3 exhibits changes in prices when the change in housing demand is permanent. Equilibrium conditions are given by P0 that equalizes demand and supply at the stock level HS0. Excess demand generates a temporary disequilibrium in which the stock remains constant, but the price and rent increases. If the shift in demand is transitory, the market will return to the old equilibrium that is the trajectory A to B to A in figure 3. If the shift in demand is permanent, higher prices will lead to new construction, the stock will increase and a new equilibrium will emerge in which the price and rent are higher than in old equilibrium but lower than in the disequilibrium that is A to B to C in figure 3. It is important to note that agents eventually learn what the long run price, rent and stock are going to be. In applying this knowledge, agents guide the market towards the equilibrium precisely because they are acting on full information. Apart from the demand and supply forces that affect the housing cost, there can be several other related factors that influence the demand and supply of housing which leads to variations in housing cost. Now we can discuss these factors briefly. Number one is disposable income. An increase in real disposable incomes makes household more affluent. This raises the demand for housing and consequently prices. Number two is prices of financial assets. The prices of financial assets, namely stock prices, may also have a two-way causality relationship with housing prices given the household's portfolios comprise both financial and physical assets. This bilateral causality relationship suggests that stocks and housing assets act as alternative investment avenues for households. Housing usually requires a large initial money capital compared to buying or investing in stocks and shares. It is also true that owner occupiers cannot afford to sell and buy houses just following a small change in prices caused by economic circumstances because of relatively high cost associated with acquisition of housing and the investment on it is also long term in nature. Home prices are very sticky downward. When there is decline in price, house owners would not rush for selling the house expecting there would be a further decline in prices. Rather, they would hold it even at lower prices. It can therefore be argued that stock and housing market are two independent markets with no short term causality in either direction. But there could be a long term relationship when returns on stocks improve, it gives rise to wealth and 
that can be utilized in holding house assets by the individuals. The monetary factors. However, housing prices could have one-way causality relationship with monetary factors. Low interest rates, that is the cost of borrowing, may lead to surge in housing prices when it is complemented with abundant credit availability and therefore increase in housing demand. There may not exist a feedback relationship from house price to cost of credit. Besides, increase in prices of construction material, labor cost, fuel prices, prices of electricity, higher tax rates are some other factors that shift the supply curve in upward direction and thus leading to rise in housing prices. For consumers, the housing cost not merely includes the housing prices but it also includes the cost of amenities, the accessibility, as well as the cost of maintenance. Now let us discuss about housing affordability. The issue of the cost of housing, whether rental or owned houses, is actually associated with the concerns for affordability of the houses, particularly if the policies aim at maximization of the welfare of the citizens. Many countries and private consultancy service companies prepare a housing affordability index. Some use it merely for calculating if a typical family could qualify for a mortgage loan on a typical home, while for others these indices are indicators of market trends which can be equally used for the consumers sellers, investors, as well as the state. Broadly, these indicators take into account the interest rate on housing loans, the disposable income of the consumers, the rent rates, which are average or the area specific, the housing prices, etc. In most of these indexes, the base value is either taken as 100, for example, in case of uh, housing affordability index, of National Association of Realtors from USA or this can be one for example in case of international residential property price indices. A value of 100 or 1 shows that the median family income is just sufficient to purchase a median priced home. Important components of housing affordability index can be discussed as follows. The first component is price to income ratio, which is the basic measure for apartment purchase affordability. It is the ratio of median apartment prices to median familial disposable income. Here, net disposable income is defined as 1.5 times the average net salary and the median price is defined as average price of a square meter in city center and outside of the city center. The second component is that of mortgage percentage ratio which is the ratio of actual monthly cost of the mortgage to take home family income. Next component is price to rent ratio which is the average cost of ownership divided by the received rent income if we are buying to let or the estimated rent that would be paid if renting if we are buying to reside for an average house. Another component is gross rental yield which is the total yearly gross rent divided by the house price expressed in percentages. And another component is that of loan affordability index which is an inverse of mortgage as percentage of income that is 100 per mortgage as percentage of income. But if we look at the rental markets in developed countries, we can easily get an idea what would be the scenario in developing economies in the coming time period who are trying hard to catch up the former. The distribution of houses by tenure arrangement in few selected developed countries is shown in table 1. The table shows that more than 30% of the housing is rental housing 
while on the other hand the rental housing in india has very low penetration as compared to the developing countries table 1 further elaborates that out of the social housing stock the relative share of the pure public sector and that of the profit and non profit organizations are country specific for example in ireland and australia about 90% land and 80% is contributed by pure public sector alone while in european region that is france netherlands and denmark nearly whole of the social housing is provided by the profit and non profit housing associations the affordability index shown in table is actually based upon the post crisis prices for housing in various parts of the world out of which usa has experienced the sharpest crash and if we look at the most affordable cities in the table one all of them belong to usa while the least affordable cities mainly belong to the developing world in the post crisis period the housing prices did not fall homogeneously across the world prices have boomed crashed and in some markets boomed again in the duration of 5 years that is 2006 to 2010 and this can be observed from figure 4 the recent data on annual rate of change in housing prices show the negative trends in case of europe while the sharpest increase can be observed in asia and pacific followed by africa the annual rate of change in housing prices by region is displayed in figure 5 the information on housing prices in asia and pacific is also available up to the first quarter of 2014 and it shows that the increase in housing prices in the asian region still continues the changes in the housing prices in asia and pacific are shown in figure 6 the figure shows that the housing prices in china taiwan australia new zealand indonesia and malaysia remain bullish in the first quarter of 2014 with the majority of them registering more than 10% of annual increase in housing prices india too has registered an annual increase of about 4% in the housing prices Knight Frank Research 2014 has shown that the upsurge in housing market in the economies of Asia and Pacific has been possible due to robust growth in infrastructure facilities. This report highlights that the development of new transport corridors and changes in the urban mass transit systems along with pro market credit policies of the banks for housing loans has largely contributed to increase in investment as well as demand for housing in asia and the pacific region 11th annual demographia international housing affordability survey 2014 which provides housing affordability ratings on 86 major markets and an overall total of 378 markets estimated that globally among the major metropolitan markets housing affordability worsened though by a very slight margin over the last year the number of severely unaffordable as well as affordable major metropolitan markets was unchanged but the number of seriously affordable markets increased by 3 while the number of moderately unaffordable markets declined by 2 here it must be noted that this survey uses median house price data in each country and then it uses the median multiple which is median house price divided by gross annual median household income to assess 
housing affordability. Thus, median multiple is a house price to income ratio. Similar house price to income ratio, that is house affordability multiples, are used to compare housing affordability between markets by the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, the International Monetary Fund, International Credit Rating Agencies, and many more. Further, it is being felt that the median multiple is more reliable, easily understood, and essential structural indicator for measuring the health of residential markets and facilitates meaningful and transparent comparisons of housing affordability. Further to this, the median multiple provides a solid foundation for the consideration of structural policy options for restoring and maintaining housing affordability in local metropolitan areas. Demographia International Housing Affordability Survey defines housing severely unaffordable if the median multiple is 5.1 and over, seriously unaffordable for median multiple to be between 4.1 and 5, moderately unaffordable between 3.1 and 4, and affordable for median multiple being 3 or less. The estimates of this survey of 378 markets in 2014 are shown in Table 2. The table shows that among all the 378 markets, there were 98 affordable markets, 88 in the United States, 5 in Canada, 3 in Ireland, and for the first time, there were affordable markets in Australia. These were two in number. There were 119 moderately unaffordable markets, 97 in the United States, 16 in Canada, 3 in United Kingdom, and 1 each in Japan, Ireland, and Australia. There were 76 seriously unaffordable markets and 85 severely unaffordable markets. Australia had 33 severely unaffordable markets followed by United States with 25 and the United Kingdom with 16. New Zealand and Canada each had severely unaffordable markets while China's one market that is Hong Kong was also severely unaffordable. Further, it was also estimated that the most affordable major markets were Detroit with an index value 2.1, Rochester, New York with index value 2.4. Housing was also affordable in Atlanta, Indianapolis, Columbus and Oklahoma City with their stronger economies. In Table 3, we can see that most affordable major metropolitan markets were in the United States with 14 markets rated as affordable. Hong Kong's median multiple of 17 was the highest recorded, that is the least affordable, in the 11 years of Demographia International Affordability Survey. Again, Vancouver was second only to Hong Kong with a median multiple of 10.6. Housing affordability in Sydney deteriorated to a median multiple of 9.8, which was followed by San Francisco and San Jose, each with, a, in a, each with an index value of 9.2. Melbourne had a median multiple of 8.7 and London 8.5. Three other markets had median multiples of 8.0 or above, including San Diego, Auckland and Los Angeles. Variations in quality of housing. Since cost of the houses along with the disposable income of the individuals are important determinants of the affordability, it would also have important impact upon quality of housing one resides in. Poorer residents and the households live in low quality houses and are more exposed to health problems related with poor housing quality. A WHO report on housing conditions and health problems has shown that low-income households have a greater possibility to live in the damp houses 
with poor ventilation conditions and sanitation facilities which further results in health inequalities. This study is based upon 8,519 participants from 3,373 households. The main results of this report regarding variations in housing quality across different income groups are discussed as follows. Houses with damp and mold growth. The poor quality houses are generally poorly ventilated and therefore inflict dampness and mold growth. Damp is much more common in houses of the lowest income groups as compared to the highest income group. This is shown in figure 7. The figure shows that the occurrence of damp in low income households is almost four times higher as compared to the high income households. So is the case with mold, although on a somewhat lower level. Mold growth occurs three times more often in dwellings of the households, in the dwellings of the lowest than the highest income groups. Space per household member An ideal housing for proper mental and physical growth of individuals requires at least one room per adult household member or at least one room for a married couple. Availability of less than one inhabitable room per person is defined as crowding. If the housing prices are rising, the affordability of families to own a bigger house as per the family size would be lower. In a costly housing markets for own as well as rented houses, low and middle income groups face the problem in paying the house expenditure which results in lower space per household member or crowding. Crowding is much more common in low income households that is the households that have problems to pay their housing expenditure. Figure 8 shows that the problem of crowding can be found almost two and a half times more often in households reporting financial problems than in those whose housing costs are not perceived as a burden. Noise disturbance. A home is a place where one can live in one's own desirable way. Peace and tranquility in the daytime as well as in the night is the most important factor for a comfortable living. An adequate and undisturbed sleep is the most important factor for a healthy living. In noisy houses, people also suffer from sleep problems. People with low affordability live in houses located in such areas which are exposed to frequent noise disturbances, while the rich or those who do not have any problem to pay housing expenditure prefer to live in less crowded or less noisy areas. In figure 9, we can see that the dwellings of the households reporting problems to pay their housing expenditure. The frequency of noise disturbance is at 33% as compared to about 21% for households that have no financial problem to pay housing expenditure. The exposure rate of 21% for well-off households, however, shows that noise exposure is a general environmental problem for all population groups. Housing quality and health problems. The inequities in distribution of good quality houses are closely associated with inequities in health risks. The residents of poor quality houses are more exposed to health hazards. The households with lower incomes have lower affordability to quality houses and suffer from more of the health problems as compared to the households with no financial problems to pay housing expenditure. Thus, the financial capacities have a strong impact on health via poor housing conditions. The dampness in houses, mold growth, poor air quality, water and sanitation facilities, etc. may cause infections, bronchitis, tuberculosis, pneumonia and many other health problems. The WHO study has indicated that the low quality houses 
show poor health outcomes as they are exposed to multiple risks. This study has shown that there exists a close relationship between So students, let us sum up what we have learned from this module. We all admit that housing is an important indicator of quality of life of an individual. Purchase of a house is a lifetime investment for an average person as it consumes a significant proportion of one's income and savings. The type of house in which a person lives depends upon the cost of the houses, the disposable income and the facilities which determine the accessibility as well as the affordability of houses. Housing affordability is an important determinant of the standard of living because higher cost housing leaves less in discretionary incomes. Thus, the differences in income and cost of houses lead to differences in access to various types of houses which lead to differences in quality of houses. It has been observed that the low income families live in low quality houses due to their lower paying capacity of housing expenditure. But the poor quality of the houses also leads to several health problems. Therefore, any policy targeting at reduction of poverty and improvement of health status of the citizens must take care of housing quality in their policy framework. A control on housing prices, provision of subsidized houses for the targeted income group and providing for easy credit facilities can be important steps in this regard. Since Housing is a basic necessity. Until it is not paid due attention, the benefits of urbanization would not reach the common masses. Thus, for inclusive growth, the control of cost and quality of housing needs urgent policy attention. That's all with this lecture. I hope you must have enjoyed it. Thank you.